Now we're into the portion of the book where we're going over the breed standard, of course. I figured it might be a good time to take a break from the written standard to actually physically show you some of the things that we've been talking about in bullet point style on a real headpiece. This is my judge's education book that the video book that you've been looking at is actually formatted after. The eyes are the essence of a Springer's appeal. We all know this. Um, the ears are set level with the eye. So what does that mean? What do the words mean? Okay. So the eye is set level with the ear. Right there. There's the ear, there's the eye. So the eye is set level with the ear. Long, pendulous, well-feathered well, well feathered ears. Now, the stock must not be a pronoun feature. If you see American cockers, they have this very, very deep. From the side, it almost looks like we could have a very deep stop, but we don't. It's actually moderate. What creates that is the optical illusion of the high arch eyebrow. This high arch eyebrow that's protruding gives the appearance of a deeper stop. It's really very, very modern. You can see there on the eye, okay? And black dog's very hard to see. It's actually better to see it in the pictures, but the eyebrow is high, arch. There's actually a bone there. There's a bone that creates that high arch. Okay, the skull and muzzle are the same as the length. Okay, this is, I haven't seen judges do this like since the 1960s, early 70s. And they did it with every Springer they examined. I don't know why they got up, why it got out of fashion, because to me it just makes so much sense. So those, those that you are judges, fine. But the middle of the stop at the end of the nose, okay, right, should be the set length as the middle of the stop to the occiput. The occiput is this pointy bone back here. So this should be the same length as this. The judges, when they examined dogs, they went boom, boom. Easy. Then the width of the muzzle. The width of the muzzle should be exactly half of the head. So this double should be the width of the head. The judges would come up during the examination. They'd go boom, boom. They'd go boom, boom, just to regulate that. And, of course, we always want a flat top skull. Flat, flat top skull. And square. See how this is square? It's square. The top skull should be square and flat. There you can see how flat it is. This is a fully mature bitch. Okay? She has lovely, lovely flu, which we are losing in the breed, so I hope. Breeders pay more attention to this when they are breeding. They should have big, plushy, just these nice, plushy, thick, plushy flu. And the flu, here's the jawline, should meet or go below the jawline. Hers actually goes a little bit below, which is good. But this is what I'm seeing in the show ring today is a lot of this.
But this is what I'm seeing in the show ring today is a lot of this. No. You want this nice, big, and it should be square. See how the flu almost gives a square appearance? He has a very, very, very good depth of flu. That's depth of flu, meaning that it's falling down below the jawline. It's not thin. Boy, I've seen teeny, teeny, thin flus on springers. No, no, nice, big, fleshy flus. Look at that. And relatively square as they fall down the side of the head. And again, you can see that nice black top skull. I don't know how on video this is showing up. But the high arched eyebrow is here. High arched eyebrow. So from the side, it gives that appearance. But from the front, it's just a nice moderate stop. The eyes, the eyes should match the color of the coat. On a black springer, you can have a dark liver eye or a black eye, but the pigment should match the color of the coat. What is the direction I was going? So the pigment of the eye should match the color of the coat, and you do not see a red hull. See how tight these eyes are on Marcy? They're also oval in shape. And they're tight. You don't see this. You don't see a big drooping hull. I can't. I can't even force the skin on this bitch to do it. She has such a lovely headpiece. The nose is completely filled in. There's no pink. No pink, and it matches the color of the coat. So the pigment all the way around. So a liver springer should match liver. And you almost see that pinky liver stuff sometimes around the eyes and nose. No. If you look at the pedigree, I bet you they have bred liver to liver, liver to liver, liver to liver. Never, well, I would advise not doing that. I would breed liver to liver, but then the next generation I would always breed black to liver. If you keep bringing black into your liver program, you will keep this nice dark pigment on your liver springers. You also keep a better top coat. All right, so here we are again. So the eyes on a black springer should match the color of the coat, meaning black but they can also be dark brown, not hazel yellow brown or green brown like mine, but a nice dark liver brown. So let's see 
by the words of the book here, the skull and muzzle are the same length. So again, the muzzle and the skull are the same length. In profile, the skull and my muzzle lie in parallel planes. Well, we know Jesse James had those wonderful European perfect flat here, perfect flat here. This is typical. In an American Springer, you're going to get a little bit, a little bit of an, slightest little bit angle down rather than perfect level, level. Okay, let's just say uh, the American style, if you will. The back skull is twice the width of the muzzle. See, it's written in our standard. The judges used to do that. So here's the muzzle. So the skull should be one, two, twice the width of the muzzle. Judges would come up. They do this. They do this. They do this. They do this. You know, they'd even they'd even go like that with their finger because in their mind, I guess they were, you know, going through the breed standard in their brain. But that's the way they used to actually did the hands on. If you're looking at a Springer and they've got short muzzle and you can't quite figure out what I, I like this head, but there's something about it. Right. Well, ha. Huh. So check this and this. Chances are you've got a short muzzle, and that's what's throwing your optical your optical off when you're looking at the headpiece. Okay, the back skull twice the width of the jaws are square, lean, and strong. Well, again, so here's the whole jaw. It's square. It's lean, meaning that if I can get her to stare right into the camera, okay, it's not sticking out. See how just it's perfectly flat. You can't see it. It's not sticking out. It's not big bony. Okay, and they're obviously very strong. I've hunted with this bitch. She's a beautiful hunting bitch. The nose and eye rim are fully pigmented. Fully. There's no pink spot on any of them. And the teeth, of course, as we know, meet in a scissor or level bite. This is a scissor bite. I just wanted to go through that again. We do half soft. The muzzle in the back skull is equal. The muzzle here should be double that. You should have a flat back skull that's square. Square. The ear, ear set should be equal to the eye. The jaw should be strong. It should be bony and sticking out. should be nice and elegant and flat with the side of the head so you really don't even see it. And if you look at the dimensions, it is even square on a square. Square here, square flu, square cheat, and boom, 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 boom. Simple. And the eye should be oval. Pigment should match the color of the coat. And that is a beautiful black and white Springer bitch head. We will talk about type later. Yes, we can have a spectrum of type. If you like something more feminine, more petite, Perfectly fine, as long as it adheres to the breed standards. As long as all those dimensions that I just went over matches that more petite framework. But we will, that, we will visit that in this book. Okay, so there's Marcy and a beautiful black and white head. Uh, also, you know, you don't want all this to be big, huge. Watch some handlers sometimes. They have these big throaty springers, which is to be faulted. They'll grab all this and tuck it under their hands and leave it there, and leave it there. No, that's where handling sometimes can win the game. Remember, the judge has three minutes to evaluate your dog, three minutes. All they can do is see what the handler or the breeder or the owner is presenting them in that three minutes. And if you have a handler that knows all the tricks to hide the faults of the dog, and you're just an owner first time walking into the ring, and here's just my dog, sometimes that knowledge of how to zoom in optical illusions and show the judge optical illusions with sleight of hand um, can be an advantage. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful headpiece on the side, on the front. Probably one of the prettiest headpieces on a Springer bitch that I've had. There we go. Looking at her mom.
Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and our Springer Club plans to bring you many, many more. Please know that we are not getting monetized by YouTube yet. We have to have 1,000 subscribers. I have thousands of hours of people watching these videos, which makes us very happy. But our Springer Club could use the revenue with all the hard work we put in. So please subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to support us, please go to PayPal. The address is listed here. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Can't seem to find my way, my wrongs from right. If I had the chance, I'd go back to my hometown. I tell them all.